Good morning and a warm welcome to one and all present over here teachers and all the educa educators. Thank you so much for joining on another Super Sunday workshop and this time we are getting into the details of school quality assurance and assessment framework. SQUAF, that's how it's called as. And, and it's, it's a framework which lays down certain rules and regulations and decorum to be maintained. What exactly are we talking about? Let's understand this one step at a time. And for all the people who have joined for the first time, my name is Vasudevan Natarajan and I I'm part of this organization called a Super Teacher Radio Reforms. Um, as a custom and tradition in our organization, every Sunday from 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock, we conduct the Super Sunday workshop, which are certified right after a small assessment, which comes in the form of reflection form, which needs to be filled before 6 p.m. on the same day in order to get the certification, which could be used for your mandatory CPDRs. So uh, the objective of these seminars webinars is, is from the perspective of providing awareness and exposure to the world of Indian education system and compare it with various other countries as well. And in that way, SQUAF is one amazing topic that I would really like to, uh, you know, focus on. In fact, it is very underrated. Now, why do I call this as underrated? Because suppose if there is any teacher out there, say Poonam ma'am, has an ambition of starting her own school or running a chain of school. I think this 300 page document is some sort of a guidebook for that. You don't have to do anything else. Just open this cough document right from the beginning and that's it. You're done. You can, you can start a school. I'm, I'm talking about an actual running of school right from the construction point. Uh, like you want to construct a school right now, then, then you need to have certain uh, dimensions of your classroom. You need to have certain dimensions of the corridor. You need to understand what inclusivity means. Everything is covered in this particular document. So SQUAF, according to me, uh, just a personal opinion, could be a very good beginner document for anyone who is actually interested in getting into the world of running an organization or a school. In fact, just not school. I would say even an organization for that matter. So uh, in case if any teacher out there did not go through it, this is the right term to go through. Take your time. It's 300 pages. It might seem to be a little overwhelming, but after today's session, you'll understand the categorization of the document and you'll be selecting only those points that are actually required for you. And it's all about, you know, generally people say whenever you learn new things, the process uh, seems to be kind of difficult. But as they say, as the going gets tough, the tough gets going. So once you complete the document and when people ask you about scoff, you wouldn't say that it's a tough document and say, no, it's kind of easy. You just need to complete it once. That's it. So in that regard, I would like to talk about uh, SQUAF today, keeping in mind uh, the administration part of the school, keeping in mind the infrastructure point of school, a lot of things, a lot of things, one by one. And let's try to understand why is it important for us right now at this particular point, filling SQUAF. Now, filling up SQUAF is more like a mandate by CBSE, and this document is prepared by CBSE in collaboration with multiple SCERTs. And uh, this was just to create a benchmark. Now, let, let us understand this scenario. Uh, there are two things let's let's understand before getting on in, uh, with the actual squaff part. Uh, let's assume there is a new teacher, Hemlata ma'am. And Hemlata ma'am is actually joining uh, a school, say, which is completely new. It's totally new. And... Uh, She's having a decent five years experience on how to conduct classes, lesson planning, annual plan, and etc. Basic idea of how to be a good teacher in a particular school. Now, Hemlata ma'am goes to the school called as ABC school. Let's assume that she's getting well paid. And initial one week, she's trying to understand uh, how the school functions. She's talking to her friends. Uh, like she's talking to Sukhdira ma'am probably. She's talking to Ranjita. She's also talking to Ruth or Neelam. Everyone for that matter. And she's trying to understand. Some people forgot to mention her that on Thursdays, this particular school has a custom of wearing uh, the dress code. Basically, the dress code has got a specific um, rule that, that on Thursday it has to be white. Let's assume it has to be white. We used to have white and white uniform on Thursday. So that's how I'm referencing it. But here, Hemlata ma'am did not know about it. She comes to the school. She finds her to be really odd. And she's asking why everyone is wearing white. People say that, ma'am, I think you forgot. It's actually white on Thursdays. She goes back immediately, apologizes to the vice principal, HM, and says that, ma'am, I did not know about it. I'm really sorry. Now, here in this case, the vice principal or the principal immediately say that, Himlata ma'am, when we gave the appointment letter, we also gave you an HR manual. 
You would have seen that in that particular manual, the rule clearly mentions that on Thursday it has to be white. I would very humbly request you to please go through the complete manual next time. Now, this particular teacher, Hemlata, out of little bit of embarrassment, she goes back and reads the complete manual. She's able to get the complete grip of what the school is all about, the rules, regulations and the decorum. And next time she tries to follow it. Now, the main aspect over here, teachers, if that rule book was not present in place, you can't get the information from all the teachers or even a dedicated person without a document. It's, it's quite not possible. It has to be written down somewhere. Imagine this teacher. It's not imagination. In fact, it's reality. This particular teacher, Hemlata, is more like a school. In an organization of ABC school, maybe here in this case, a school present within a country. Now, when we talk about India as a country, it has got certain rules and regulations and some decorum to be followed in order to run a school. There might be times in our daily life when we see so many CBC circulars or so many circulars from government of India talking about do this, do that, do this, do that. There are a lot of chances that we might tend to skip them. And that's completely fine. Considering our regular schedule, it's kind of little overwhelming jarring as well and that's completely fine but doesn't mean that we ignore that now why do we mention about it it's because uh, there were many requests from various schools across the country to government stating that we are not able to complete the part C of SQUAF for various reasons and we are not able to complete the whole document as well could you please extend the date and 31st March is the last uh, date 31st March 2024 is the last date for filling up squaff for the academic year 2023-24. It's really imperative for a school, just like a teacher goes through the rules and regulations of a particular school and follows the rules of a school. It's important for a school to follow the rules and regulations of the country precisely the education policy. And you know what, without uh, affecting anybody's uh, you know, intellectuality or even ego for that matter, uh, Squaff document came up with a very nice declarations. Did you know that? I would like to share my screen and show you what exactly I'm intending to speak about. And you'll be really surprised. In fact, it need not be only in Squaff. This could be a printout and kept right beside your mirror. I kind of like these affirmations. Let me show you. So school quality assessment and assurance framework, it's a revisit. I think in the month of July, we touched on SQUAF when it actually got released with multiple webinar dates. So you can go back and check it out. But this is going to be more like a revision. So if any teacher who has been participating in the Super Sunday workshop since July, I think you will be able to connect some of the things that happened in the past. Now, before starting, I told you about the SQUAF documents declarations, right? Let's, let's quickly understand that. And... Uh, I press escape. I go to the SQUAF document. This is how it looks like. So CBC School Quality Ass Assessment and Assur Assurance Framework, 300 page document, quite an interesting document if you actually go through. Uh, yeah, but it's written in black and white. Sometimes there are colors at the background. Sometimes you might fall sleepy. So it's better to use the disintegration methodology where you take one uh, domain in, in particular, understand that, and then go to the second domain and third domain, rather than completing this whole document in one go. So there is this thing called as learner profile. Let's go to learner profile and see this. This is what I was talking about, uh, what we were talking about, preparing myself for the future. So uh, self-aware, I work to understand myself better and I'm open to constructive feedback. Self-aware, I look for continual improvement that supports my learning as well as personal development. You are declaring this, caring and compassionate. I'm kind and thoughtful. I show kindness, empathy and compassion and uh, act to make a positive difference in the lives of others. Now, the, the, the best part is when we're talking about assessment and especially if it is about ourselves, there's going to be a lot of block in our mind. And when this learner profile is kept right in the beginning of any assessment document for that matter, this kinds of opens up a lot of doors. And just like a teacher tries to follow the instructions without any, uh, you know, grit in the mind. For example, sometimes there could be chances that uh, a teacher, him, Lata, ma'am, I'm just taking your example. She's like, what kind of rule is this? Why should I even follow it? I've got my freedom. Things like that. There are things at times. Sometimes there are certain schools who have achieved great, great level of excellence. 
and they are pro probably the top performing schools of a particular country or state but do they really have to fill up squaff basically this is like assessing if the school is really ready or not it's not a question about you know one particular school it's more from the perspective of are we meeting all the criteria when it is documented when the rules and regulations are put down on a piece of paper uh, it's like putting a check yes i am doing this yes i am doing that in fact i am doing more you know you get an opportunity to speak more and to have a mindset to accept all the pointers written and just one of the point of my school is not meeting up there was supposed to be uh, you know 10 toilets for the school but unfortunately i have got only five of them uh, okay i think i need to improve you know that that particular point if it had not been there present um, i think it would have been difficult for a school to even follow that i think you know teachers uh, every school is mandatorily supposed to have a ramp uh, for inclusive education so if there are students or a teacher who travel to school on a wheelchair a uh, ramp is mandatory in fact they've even kept the measurement of ramp uh, i think it's around 1.8 or 5 meters i'm i'm really sorry i'm not able to remember the exact uh, measurement i think nearly 2 meters it has to be present so to that extent the document mentions about the details hence in order to accept everything that is there and that is not there learner profile does a good job am i right no yeah yeah so this particular learner profile is the first uh page probably page number 5 of school quality uh, assessment and assurance framework i am sharing this on the chat uh for everyone so that you can actually go through uh this can be customized for students as well and this could be put on affirmations uh every school has uh, this uh rule of having an assembly in the morning where you have the pledge india is my country and all indians are my brothers and sisters so you you talk about i pledge my devotion on a similar line there are some schools it was very nice to see that there are some affirmations that the principal actually talks about right in the morning so there is a student on the stage who says that i am great and i am born to do great things you know they they just literally talk about it the students have to repeat it um and that's a great idea right so learner profile could could really uh, you know help the students uh, you know getting that done so uh, see look at the lines some of the lines are really catchy like open minded i try to make connections while using information communicator i'm confident and articulate in expressing myself in more ways than one i'm a good listener and can understand others perspectives if you're not a good listener and if you read the statement there's going to be a little hiccup while speaking but the best part is the best part is when you are actually a good listener and and when you read that you really connect with that and that's how the improvement happens right that's it so this is with respect to learner profile which i found the most to be most fascinating in the whole document of course lot of other things are there but uh uh this is something uh, really nice which i really like about it that's fantastic oh you follow all these things uh you're not able to open the pdf please try it again nikita ma'am uh the moment you click on the link it should get opened up let's get back to our uh, you know uh, actual webinar today and that's going to be on school quality assessment and assurance framework revisit now when i talk about um, the framework over here now this is completely for schools but there are other frameworks based on which a country is even you know checked upon for example some of them is school quality index uh there was something that got launched by 2016 by niti aayog where they spoke about um, various labs various academic uh, criteria i think there were four or five criteria that were con considered and based on that certain certain um, rubrics were considered and marks were allotted to that and based on that the top schools used to be you know declared well that's not going to happen anymore according to cbse they say that the schools are not going to be compared with one another but it will be compared with their own self so this year abc school was at this level next year the abc school is mandatorily supposed to be the next level i hope you are able to understand so it's going to be comparison with the previous year documents and that's why scoff has become mandatory how let's see that performance grading index is another 
area it's just not for schools it was also for various organization similarly sdg india index it's, it's a comparison of a country with various other countries as well you can actually make a note of it and actually these are some links the moment i click on it it will actually take us to the respective index and there is another very good index that uh, niti ayog and government of india follow and that's called as global innovation index i think you know that you also know about gdp right uh, where does india stand as a gdp so we are the fifth largest economy in the world. world and in one of the events shri narendra modi ji even spoke about becoming the third largest economy very soon considering lot of schemes like digital india and things like that well the point here is when there is an index at that level important just imagine any country's development is directly dependent on its investment in education sector so how much you know look at the plight that that this particular zone or the department of our ministry of education requires to be focused on for developing a framework on ensuring the quality hence squaf i hope you got the point now this particular squaf is just not for cbsc though it is mandated for cbsc even icc schools even uh, the state board schools are ideally supposed to follow this and when they follow it's good for them and nobody's coming and monitoring are you religiously doing it or not but yes there is a small monitoring happening in the form of collecting the documents i'll give more clarity eventually let's go uh, okay dilip kumar sir that's a good point but uh, no <laughs> that's going to be quite a challenge <laughs> that cannot happen uh, dilip sir but anyways let's talk about it before that i would like to share this uh, you know video over here of uh, you know sqaa watch this साथियों आज एक और महत्वपूर्ण शुरुआत स्कूल क्वालिटी असेसमेंट एंड एश्योरेंस फ्रेमवर्क यानी एस क्यू एप के माध्यम से भी हो रही है अभी तक देश में हमारे स्कूलों के लिए एजुकेशन के लिए कोई एक कॉमन साइंटिफिक फ्रेमवर्क ही नहीं था कॉमन फ्रेमवर्क के बिना शिक्षा के सभी पहलुओं जैसे कि करिकुलम पैडागोजी एसेसमेंट इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर इंक्लूसिव प्रैक्टिसेस और गवर्नेंस प्रोसेसेस इन सभी के लिए स्टैंडर्ड बनाना मुश्किल होता था इससे देश के अलग अलग हिस्सों में अलग अलग स्कूलों में स्टूडेंट्स को शिक्षा में असमानता का शिकार होना पड़ता है लेकिन एस क्यू एप अब इस खाई को पाटने का काम करेगा इसकी सबसे बड़ी खूबी है इस फ्रेमवर्क में अपनी जरूरत के हिसाब से बदलाव करने की फ्लेक्सिबिलिटी भी राज्य के पास होगी स्कूल्स भी इसके आधार पर अपना मूल्यांकन खुद ही कर सकेंगे इसके आधार पर स्कूलों को एक ट्रांसफॉर्मेशनल चेंज के लिए प्रोत्साहित भी किया जा सकेगा दैट्स राइट transformational change there is a massive change based on following the instructions and there needs to be a document on which these change are evidently visible and that's our uh, squaf report basically with which you can see where our schools standing multiple schools have already completed this process and they got their own overall report so what did they get the report on let's understand that and for that let's go to the next slide so uh, initially uh, cbsc so came up with uh, sorry the nep spoke about uh, academic matters including academic standards and curricula in the state will be led by the scrt with close consultation and collaboration with ncrt which will be reinvigorated as an institution the scrt will develop a school quality assessment and accreditation framework uh through wide consultations with all stakeholders in fact um here in this case when you talk about uh, the school quality assessment and accreditation framework this is heavily dependent on scrt heavily dependent on that's the reason i'm highlighting this factor but here in this case we are not talking about accreditation we are talking about assurance and assessment there are two different things this same document could also be used for affiliation uh, 
the process of renewing the affiliation as well. So in, in case if there is a CBC inspection happening in the school, probably the inspectors who are coming from various schools, the principals of Kendra Vidyalaya and Atomic Energy, they might ask us the SQUAF document. Like, show me that. Let's begin from there. It has got all the criteria. And that could be used for affiliation as well. So NEP just not speaks about the accreditation. It also talks about the assurance. Yes, this is what is happening. Let's understand that. Let's understand that. And this is basically... Uh, so there was a series of uh, webinars that was organized by CBSC uh, to conduct and uh, effectively complete the SQUAF document. If you go through these 13 webinars, it's like unraveling the 300-page document. It's a very good series. The only thing is they're very long, two, two hours, each of them. So nearly 22 to 24 hours of session was conducted on SQUAF. Multiple people participated and a lot of good uh, trainers out there came and you know, perform, they showed how it is supposed to be done. So in case if anyone is looking forward for a detailed elaboration on SQUAF, I think you need to get into the series. I'll give the link a little while again, a little later. And let me go to the next slide right now. So Jan 2nd, 2024, there was uh, this extension of last year of submission for self-assessment on SQUAF portal. I think you know this. 24th March, 2023, last year, we got the, the circular stating that there'll be something called as a squaff and it'll be present on the CBC Saras website or Saras, however you call that. And in that, you have a separate login uh, area. You just need to click login as a school and put the affiliation number and the password. So you can even use CBC Siksha mail ID if you have that. And you can start enrolling yourself and completing your scoff format. Complete. It's just some tick marks. I'll talk about it a little later again. Then there was another public alert that came in 2nd Jan 2024. Very important. Um, uh, there were some schools uh, where they collaborated with multiple organizations to complete SQUAF. And for that, CBC came to know about it. They said that it has come to the notice of board that some information has been circulating stating that the CBSE has partnered with some organization for implementation of SQUAF. There is no organization in India which does that. CBC would like to categorically state that that is no connection whatsoever with any organization for implementation of SQUAF. So it's completely fine. If you hire someone, it is like having uh, an additional benefit for the school. Nobody's stopping you. But no, you know, private organization should come to the school and say that, ma'am, we are here to implement SQUAF. We represent CBSE. No, that cannot happen. All the webinars conducted for SQUAF are available on the YouTube channel, which is more than sufficient to complete SQUAF. For any information related to SQUAF, please visit the following. They gave you the details. The board is vigilant and active in identifying and taking action against those spreading fake news and rumors of using uh, CBSE and SQUAF logos for their vested interests. Yeah, authenticity is very important. The information is being brought to the public notice to safeguard the interest of all stakeholders and to prevent any potential loss or false information and communication. Actually, we are living in an era of technology. Passing an information is so easy. You just type something on WhatsApp and you send it, it becomes viral. Back in those days, in order to have a circular delivered to the school, there used to be multiple logistics involved. A letter is written with proper GO, government order, with proper signature of the Ministry of Education, and that envelope travels almost to all the schools. All the schools. The principals receive that, and based on that, the actions are taken. Back in 1980s and 90s, I think some of the principals and teachers, if you are experienced from that era of education, I think you know what I mean to say. But now, as the things have become very easy, there's a portal update that you get that. So everybody's using that information in any way you want. In fact, even these Super Sunday workshops, I would very humbly request you, whatever I'm speaking over here, please go back and cross verify. And that verification will allow you to do a little more research and then come back to the actual topic. You'll be convinced and talk about the right information. This was basically the SQUAF introduction. Let me quickly play this video. It's a very small video and then we'll get into the actual document one. Nelson Mandela once said, when learning and teaching continually improves, everything improves. Excellence of the education system depends a lot upon the functioning of a school. And when we say functioning, it's not just the knowledge of teachers, but a lot many other aspects like curriculum, pedagogy, assessment, infrastructure, inclusive practices, human resources, management, and most importantly, governance and leadership. 
In the year 2020, national education policy has been introduced, which recommends that regulation must aim to empower schools and teachers with trust, enabling them to strive for excellence and perform at their very best, while ensuring the integrity of the system through the enforcement of complete transparency and full public disclosure of all finances, procedures and educational outcomes. Being a national board of education in India, CBSE has been given the mandate to act as Standards Setting Authority SSE for the schools affiliated to CBSE and functioning under the control of various ministries or departments of the central government. To fulfill this task, CBSE has prepared qualitative standards for each and every aspect of school functioning. The board has kept learners at the centre of the standards framework with the goal of developing them to be more confident, connected, actively involved and lifelong learners. The new framework also defines the standards delineating the student profiles across various domains which will now act as a yardstick to evaluate effectiveness of school practices. This qualitative assessment framework will enable all schools to evaluate themselves against the defined standards and qualitative benchmarks. Once evaluation is completed, schools can charter their own self-improvement in all aspects of school functioning. And in the next few years, we aim to achieve excellence in school education and prepare students for an increasingly complex and independent world and contributing citizens of the country. So they spoke about some domains and the areas for which a school has to focus on in order to be an exceptional school. And in that regard, uh, we came up with this uh, portal. You know, Government of India came up with this portal called as Squaff. Let's click on that. So the moment we get into Squaff, which is actually from CBSC website, you can directly go or else you can type saras.cbsc.gov.in slash SQAA. Now, this particular portal has the place from where you can actually log in by clicking on login over here on the top right corner. You can see that and click on school login. The moment you click on school login, you'll have to put the affiliation number and you can get into it. Now, here in this case, here in this case, let's go and understand what exactly Squaff is all about. We just saw this video and uh, this is what they're talking about. So this particular document is made based on NEP. And NEP keeps the students as the center. So based on the development of children in a school education, everything is uh, you know, made. The rules and regulations are revolving around that particular point. There are certain benchmark global standards which the school has to attain and follow. Now, uh, yeah. So learner at the center of the stage. So focus on continuous school improvement and quality performance and enable schools to charter self-improvement plans. Now here, this particular thing, at, at, at least in the current scenario, it's completely on self-improvement and development. It's not like nobody's monitoring it as such. But during the process of uh, impl implementation of SCOF, whenever somebody's coming for affiliation or renewal of affiliation, they will ask for the SCOF documents, the supporting documents. You say that I've got an exceptional computer lab. Can I see some pictures? That's how the question is going to be. So self-assessment by school on the SCOF framework. And when you do the self-assessment, there are certain criteria that might not be applicable for the school. You can ignore that. And based on that, there will be a report that will be generated. So development of school improvement plan based on the report. And finally, implementation of school improvement plan. And again, filling up SCOF for the next academic year and see the growth. So that's how the idea is. And then they came up with making sense of SCOF. And these are the seven domains. Now, this is what I ultimately wanted to show you. I hope you're able to see this. So the seven domains under which a school is judged, a school is monitored, or a school has to assess themselves on is curriculum pedagogy and assessment, domain number one. Infrastructure, domain number two. Human resources, domain number three. Inclusive practices, domain number four, management and governance, five, leadership, six, and beneficiary satisfaction, seven. So these are the five domains under which a school has to work towards to in order to uh, show a very good report that you are an eligible school for a CBC affiliation or the renewal of the same. In fact, in fact, there's a red mark over here just to show that 40% of the major score over here Let's assume it is like uh, one to seven of them, right? So the first carries 40 marks. The other carries only 10, 10, 10 marks, accounting it to 100 marks. So 40% of 
uh, the assessment is going to be on curriculum pedagogy and assessment now what are these actually having in fact you will you'll see that uh, right after curriculum uh, uh under curriculum so uh, sorry right after curriculum pedagogy and assessment this is called as domain number one they've got sub domains to it so under curriculum are they following nep guidelines are they following the national curriculum framework guidelines are they following uh, uh the right pedagogical approach the teacher training pro, uh, programs, the teacher learning pedagogical strategies for the students and things like that. Are they following competency-based assessment and things like that? So all these are coming under the category of curriculum, pedagogy and assessment. And then comes infrastructure with some other points called as again subdomains. Now each of these subdomains will have a certain declaration point. My teachers are eligible to conduct a class following the NCF guidelines. If the teachers are really eligible, they should have gone through the NCF document. If the teachers have to go through the NCF document, the principal should have conducted a session on NCF or should have allowed the teachers to join a program wherever NCF uh, briefing is happening or debriefing is happening. They could have participated in one of the CBC workshops or one of the Super Sunday workshops where they talk about NCF. And that is going to be the supportive document or the certificate to show that, yes, my teachers are ready. I hope you're getting the connect. So it's going to be the domain and right after the domain, there's going to be subdomains and each of these subdomains are going to have certain standards and these standards are statements which we have to follow. That's it. That's it. And, and when you put together, there's a huge number that we're going to look into. I'm going to actually show that to you. Uh, let's get into uh, about we got into the process. Did we get into the process? Yes. Great. I think this is, yeah, you can see this. So teachers, I hope everyone is able to see this. You will have domains, broad areas of school functioning, which are seven in number. Then we'll have subdomains for each of those domains. Specify what constitutes the concerned domain. For example, curriculum, pedagogy and assessment. They can have subdomains. So that's like one domain. Under that, you can have uh, curriculum, pedagogy and and domain number subdomain number three which is assessment like that infrastructure could also have multiple subdomains what are they let us look into eventually in another 10 minutes so then we have got standards which which talks about the qualification basically qualify the various aspects of the subdomain or defines the subdomain and and the best part is those statements will have assessment rubrics so for example this teacher there's the statement called as uh, the teachers are following the ncf guidelines in order to conduct a particular class now some principals will be like not all the teachers are doing it properly some principals will be like only one or two are following it properly so they came up with maturity levels or performance level now those are four in number let me show that to you on the slide itself rather than so let's go one step at a time. Okay, guiding principles. These are the seven domains. And wait, ah. Huh. So this is called as the performance and maturity levels. So depending on a particular standard getting satisfied or not, you can you can select one of these level one, level two, level three, level four, which is written as inceptive. That is system is at the initial stage. Practices are individual based, not group based. Then level two transient, which is more like system is in early constructive years. Practices are generally corrective in nature. They're able to take it up. Level three, which is stable. This is what is at least expected in all the schools. Evidences of database improvement processes. System is defined and documented. People are aware of their roles in the institution and practicing it. Practices are preventive and corrective in nature. So this is with respect to stable. Finally, dynamic evolving is at the last, at the best level, which demonstrates strong benchmark defined and documented processes. Uh, governance and leadership exhibits accountability, responsibility, self-evaluation and improvement planning. It is really my duty to read all these things because these form the scoring of our domains. Under each domain, there are certain subdomains and standards and each of them carry a certain marks. And that is also mentioned in that particular uh, SQUAF document, which I'll be showing you eventually. Now for that, for that, let me go back. Let me go back and show you. So domains, subdomains, standards, you've got the assessment rubrics and the guiding principles. Now, once this assessment rubric is filled up, uh, we get the performance indicators and levels. Where do we stand? And based on that, there is a number or a percentage allocated to each domain. Uh, for example, uh, in case of performance, uh, sorry, in case of uh, the first domain, which is curriculum, pedagogy and assessment, the total marks is 40. You remember? And out of 40, your school has scored 
35, just assume. Now, this can happen. So, there are five marks that didn't happen, right? So, for 35, there is a certain level of appreciation. And for those five marks, you will have evidences and records of which can be submitted. And then a report is generated where it is mentioned that these are the areas that could be improved. That's it. As simple as that. And nobody's coming and checking this. It's a school that has to do it for themselves. Only thing is during the affiliation when somebody's coming and asking, ma'am, you put infrastructure to be uh, 100 out of 100 or 10 out of 10 in this case. But I can see hardly there are any toilets in the school. Hardly only two of them. One for like one that side for gents and ladies and here that side for gents and ladies. No, this cannot be 10 out of 10. For a strength of 500 students, at least we should have three toilets. Something like that. I hope you got the point. So it's like we need to have the evidence documents and the report has to be done. So it, it's really a responsibility for a school to be as sincere as possible while filling this. <laughs> kind of difficult. <laughs> yeah, trust me, it's difficult. So this is the domains and their categories. Look at this. Curriculum, pedagogy and assessment. There are seven subdomains to it. Infrastructure, there are 12 subdomains to it. So look at, uh, in case if I, we talked about if somebody wants to start a school, this infrastructure you should go through, there are chances that somebody might take a back step and say that I don't want to run a school. Let me instead buy a building which is already having the school structure. You know, something like that. Human resources, a very difficult task and five subdomains. Inclusive practices, not only in the construction of the building, but also in the pedagogy. Is the teacher including all the students? Management and governance, mainly for the leaders out there. It could be HM, it could be the coordinators, the teachers, whoever is taking some responsibility of, uh, you know, some governance in the school. Leadership, uh, then beneficiary satisfaction. Satisfaction, beneficiary satisfaction is all about not only the parents, but also the students. In fact, there is a clause on the teachers as well. So when you look into subdomains, there are 49 subdomains. And for each of these subdomains, there are multiple benchmarking statements. And, and right beside the statement, there'll be a checkbox. You just need to put a tick mark. Let me show you the checkbox right away so that it provides some clarity. Do I have that in front of me? Yes, I do have. So I saw one of the videos on YouTube where uh, one great leader out there mentioned about it. Uh, you can see that after filling all the boxes, uh, this is the score that they have got. Let me show you. Uh -huh. See, you'll be able to see this uh, for one of the domains, which is principal and teachers are familiar with the spirit of the spirit and content of NCF and recommendations of NEP. So this is 1.1.1, which actually means domain number one, subdomain number one, and under subdomain, the first standard, something like that. And these are the statements. Lesson plans are reviewed regularly in relation to achievement of defined learning out outcomes. Put a tick mark. Feedback and feed forward is given to the teachers at regular intervals to improve teaching learning process. Put a tick mark. If it's not following, Ideally, don't put the tick mark and click on save. Once everything gets completed, uh, you get a final submission option, uh, which is you can see that on the top final submission. And let's come back a little bit. Correct. So you can see the domain wise, we can actually complete uh, the document and then the report is generated. Uh, I'm not able to see the final submission option. Come on. Great. So once final submission is done, teachers, you can get a report which will look like this. You can see that this particular school has scored 80%, 79.89. There are certain schools who have already scored 95 and above. Today, we'll talk to someone and see if that is actually, you know, possible or not and things like that. Yeah. So this is with respect to the SCOF framework. I hope everybody got an idea. Let's go to the last part of the session to show you what are those domains and what are the areas that we need to work on to what's... Total kitne. Come on. Yeah, here we go. So, uh, so this particular slide, uh, I mentioned uh, that CBSE circular, go to 2023 archive. You'll get to see one of the circular talks about uh, the detailed understanding of this core framework is, is conducted in the form of webinars by CBSE. They're really helpful. If you want to understand what exactly India as an education system wants a school to have and do, this is the right place. See, sometimes, you know, we say that a school is not following. We are not following. We are following. Uh, these are the problems. I think 
we all have the solutions already in place. The solutions are actually not properly placed. Maybe it's not marketed well and we do not know about it. But these, these 13 videos, when I went through, it was like quite an enlightenment that any school can really run very well with these protocols. Yes, there's going to be practical challenges of topography, practical challenges of admissions and a lot of the things. But that's what we are in here for, right? That's why we are running the school. That's why we are part of a school. So those challenges are always going to be there. But these benchmarks can act really well. So this particular link I would like to share with everyone. It's a complete playlist. And uh, it's there on the chat right now. This playlist will get you to the a complete list of all those 13 videos that we were talking about. And uh, you can actually go through them. I'll repeat it. If you're a teacher and if you're really not part of SCOF, that's completely fine. Go through this and understand what exactly Ministry of Education would like to expect from you. That's it. As simple as that. Let's go to the next one. Let's go to the next one. Now, uh, where are the page numbers? Here we go. Quickly, I would like to show you uh, those seven domains. Uh, uh, which is like, here we are. Domain number one, curriculum, pedagogy and assessment, page number 17. I would like to just show this to you. Page number one by one. So page number 17, let's go over here and see this. So this is going to be the structure. Okay, this is going to be the structure. Domain one, curriculum, pedagogy and assessment. So they talk about domain overview, what exactly they intend to speak about. But for domain number one, we need to have subdomains, right? That's mentioned over here. Subdomains, curriculum planning is the first one. Subdomain number two, teaching learning process. Subdomain three, student enrichment, skill-based vocational education programs embedded in annual pedagogical plan. Then you have got four, then you've got five, six, seven. Okay, seven subdomains for domain number one. And that is what is mentioned even in the main document over here. So you can see that. Uh, where is it? I'm sorry. Yeah. So you can see that curriculum, pedagogy and assessment subdomains. There are seven in number. I think now you're able to connect the dots. Right. Let's go to the standards now. And for standards, uh, you can see that under each subdomain, they've written the statements. Principal and teachers are familiar with the spirit and content of NCF and recommendations of NEP. Are they? Put a tick mark. The school integrated annual curriculum and pedagogical plan reflects the recommendations of the board. Is that so? Put a tick mark. Something like that. So when you go through this particular thing, even if you're not part of SCOF, you'll get a clarity that what a school must do. And that is why I find this to be a very good repository of information. And how do you rate this? How do you rubric this? This is, this is the place where you can do it. So for a 1.1.1, which is basically this particular point, which is principal and teachers are familiar with the spirit and content of NCF and recommendations of NEP. Uh, uh, is the school in the inceptive level? Is the school in transient level? Is the school stable or the school dynamic evolving? How do you come to know about it? You can see that school leaders have read the NEP and NCF documents and engaged in discussions. Oh, yes, they have done. Yeah, I've done. School leaders have identified the key recommendations of NEP and NCF. Very good. I've done that as well. The school organizes orientation program and discussions for teachers on NEP and NCF. I've done that as well. So immediately I fall into transient. Then I read the next document. Teachers integrate recommendations of NCF and NEP in their lesson plans. Oh, they definitely do that. Hence, I come under the stable document. So read this from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. I hope you got the point. It's not that you read only one box. It has to be gradually read under each box. Only then uh, putting the tick mark is kind of comfortable. Otherwise, it's difficult. Then you categorize under inceptive, transient, transient, stable, and dynamic evolving. That's it. That's it. Now, where did we get this from? Guiding principles, NCF document, NEP, position papers of NCRT, circulars issued by affiliating body or board, which is CBSC. Then you have got the major area, which is kind of very, very tedious and difficult. Suggested supportive documents that can be reviewed by school. So for this particular domain or subdomain, curriculum planning, what are the documents that you require? Let's look into it. Document number one, school curricular, pedagogical and assessment policy for each stages as per new circular and pedagogical structure. So for five plus three plus three plus four, you need to have individual academic plan. And if you have that document, you can say yes or no or in progress. Minutes of departmental meetings reflecting the discussion on NCF position paper, NCRT and NEP. They've undergone a training, put yes over there. 
orientation program put yes over there or no over there depending on that so this particular then right after that the the one two three four five six then point number seven integrated annual curriculum and pedagogical plan do we have that put that over there annual assessment and examination calendar so like that for each and every point you have got a document that needs to be supported try getting as many documents as possible so this is going to be the most tedious job for a school if you're starting squaff right now yeah so it's going to be really challenging there are some schools who did an amazing job and this is recommended even on squaff what is recommended i'll tell you so each of these domains that are present over here teachers domain one two three four five six seven there are seven teachers i'll repeat it not hm not vice principal not the academic co coordinator seven teachers who are given the responsibility of completing this work so it's like domain one okay shrilata ma'am you take care of it domain two uh chonita ma'am you take care of it domain three jaymala ma'am you take care of it so jaymala ma'am can hire another set of teachers under them and complete this process so a school with less number of teachers the process is very simple and quite fast it can be easily completed but maybe two or three domains could be com uh, you know combined and given to one teacher something like that when the task is assigned to multiple teachers and they are becoming the heads of that particular department uh they can be like that permanently for all the years and that could be swapped shilta ma'am last time you were taking care of assessment right pedagogy and uh, uh the curriculum this time you take care of human resources you will also get a good exposure something like that so this particular methodology which i saw in few schools really helped the principal in collecting all the information pretty fast well this will also give lot of responsibility and agency to individual teachers so that they can really you know focus on uh uh you know school and they can focus on uh the process of the school's development there's going to be a sense of inclusivity uh there's going to be a sense of uh it's like my school sort of a thing and i think i look at it positively there are sometimes teachers are like nahi i don't want another task on my head i'm already bugged up with so many other things could be there i don't want to comment on that but i would request you to take it positively and start doing it yeah then uh okay 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 let me uh where where are we yeah here it is then again we go to the next domain and and we have the page number let's go down let's go down let's go down i think it's page number 17 if i'm not wrong where am i page number 87 let's go to 87 when i go to 87 infrastructure adequacy functionality and aesthetics that's it so again we have got domain number 2 then we have got subdomains and for subdomains we have got the standards and again it keeps on going so this is going to be a regular practice for all the schools and the the template remains the same and that's what is going to get repeated for all the 300 pages and you don't have to go through this document at all only for reference you can have it at side and simultaneously fill the squaff portal and uh, once you do that it's like within no time probably 2 weeks according to me right now if you completely focus because the exams have already started it will be easily done so finally before uh, closing on the session today on uh, what exactly we looked into i would like to request um, you know one of the principals who have actually completed this work i think uh, sarabjit ma'am will be present over here just give me a moment yes uh sarabjit ma'am can you please unmute yourself ma'am Uh, yes, Vasu. Good morning. Yeah. Good morning, ma'am. Ma'am, I would request you to please introduce yourself and uh, uh, give a two to three minutes idea on your process that you have completed. And if you want, you can even share your report on the screen, or I'll share it. Thank you for sharing to us. Over to you, ma'am. Yeah. Good. Vasu, I also picking up this commendable job. I think the ma'am, there's a disturbance in your voice, Sarabji. After board exams, all principals have to really complete it since it's an extended date. And I just a minute. Now it is comparatively. Better, I hope now it's clear. Yeah. Yes, now it's made clear. Yes, ma'am. Yes. 
So all the educators and the principals, um, I would like to share that uh, I, a few people remember that we were bound to f follow Shala Siddhi, which falls under NPSSC, that is the National Program on School Standards and Evaluation. When I started filling up the Shala Siddhi reports to the Education Department of uh, Random and Islands, that's where I understood that what all I have to work upon. So from the last 10 years, I have been working upon that. So my school was just a beginning school in which began in 2005, but it has one, become one of the most important centers and I feel happy and I can take pride in it. So this Shala Siddhi helped me to improve the standards of my school to a very good level. So when I uh, read about SCOF, that is School Quality Assessment and um, Assurance fr Framework, it was not difficult for me. Second thing where I could improve my school upon and uh, CBSC allowed us to learn something, that was undertaking the training, one week's training under CBSC that was online after lockdown was APP Leadership. When I did that certificate uh, training for APP leadership, uh, I think only one or two principals from here did, and it was tough. It was a tough exercise, but everything became a clarity that how a school has to be run now, which included all these domains which we have discussed today. All these domains were fulfilled wherever I felt that there is a lacuna in my school. I tried to fill it up. So uh, all the seven domains uh, which we studied and yesterday when I was filling, I was so excited like a small child only sitting in front of the computer and trying to fill it up. So in domain one, uh, which is curriculum, pedagogy and assessment, uh, Vasu sir, I got uh, 36.92 marks out of 40. So, and I was like in tears, what happened? So. It is something uh, remark for me to improve upon my pedagogy and assessment elements. In domain two, that is infrastructure, adequacy, functionality, and aesthetics. Only one mark where we got level three here. Uh, we are like in a transient phase. That is eight point six five out of ten. That all the all my classes should have computers. And Vasu sir, you have already visited my school and you have seen that I know that is one lacuna. And then is domain three, that is human resources. We got 10 on 10 because I've worked very hard upon human resources, teachers training, teachers orientation. I hold orientations every month and I ensure that all my teachers, at least they attend your workshops every Sunday. So human resources in my school is a really great positive factor. So we got 10 on 10. In domain four, that is inclusive practices. Where we have got a special educator now. And he's also doing commendable work with three students out of 700 who need our special attention. So we again got 10 on 10 there. Then is domain five, that is management and governance. Uh, we again scored 10 on 10 because I ensured that all my management committee and all the stakeholders from the education department, they really help me where I need the help. Then is domain six, that is leadership, was uh, we are going to score 10 and 10 because um, myself as a principal, I worked very hard upon improving my own standards and own standards of running the school. So it was not a problem for me because I have already got the certificate of APP leader and it was tough. It was really tough, but it was really interesting also. Then is last domain, beneficiary satisfaction. Again, we scored 10 on 10 because I think all the parents and students are quite satisfied. At present, also one on one, we are helping students to prepare for board exams. So this all comes, uh, overall, we scored 284 marks out of 289, only five marks we lost. And overall, it is 96% for my school. So I've understood that there are one or two things which are lacking, and I will ensure that it is completed before the inspecting team comes. So maximum level four demonstrates that we have a strong benchmark defined and documented process in my school. The governance and leadership exhibition is accountable, responsible, and it will help me a lot in my, my another for, further 10 years of my vision for my school. As you said, sir, that when the going gets tough, the tough get going. 
in running the school there were many moments when i had to really give up but uh, at the end of the day i could not give it up and yes i treated as my own school my teachers are like my family i ensure that each and every new coming teacher knows and follows the school rules new teachers find it little tough and then we filled up the art integration also art integration when we have to upload that also helps a lot to learn that how art should be integrated into subjects and there also till you don't finish it up class wise subject wise you don't get one number they give you an art integrated number from cbsc that's how we then ad, uh, download our admit cards that's right. That's right. So if I hope that all fit in all the CRCs and BRCs of India, Shala Siddhi might be filled up. And because here the uh, island is small and it is very, very well administered. So it's easy for us to portray our things, our progress to the department. So we are always in check. And moreover, I would like to say that if all the principals are keeping themselves in check, reading and writing, whatever is coming on, CBSE circles, then it's not difficult. If people like us in Andamans, it's not difficult. Then in mainland part of India, nothing is difficult. So once again, thank you so much. So that's about the report of our school, which is quite good. And I'm happy that I could come so far in last 20 years. Thank you so much, Pastor. So thank you so much. Thank you, Sarabjit, ma'am. Thank you so much. Uh, if anybody and... has any question, they can just ask me. I'm always available uh, through you. If they want, they can share your question to you. Sure, done, done, done. So, Sarabjit, ma'am, will be here for some time, just like all the times. And uh, you can put the questions on the chat and she'll be able to respond right now. And in the meanwhile, uh, teachers, uh, uh, let's, uh, I mean, it's already time and I would like to conclude with a small video. You know, uh, it's, it's like, again, by CBC. It was about on and and organization and and <laughs> I'm sharing the screen and please watch this. I really like this, so you like it too. Did you know ants are social insects that live and work in super colonies and they are the longest living insects. While we may struggle in accomplishing small tasks, be it navigating traffic jams, or shopping in a crowded market. Ants maneuver bigger tasks quite smoothly within their colonies. How do they manage to do amazing things like digging huge nests and tunnels to protect their food and each other? Some researchers and scientists say that a colony of ants acts like a super single organism. Although they are not so clever individually, yet their collaboration and teamwork is what makes them great and inspirational for human systems too. They take ownership of responsibilities on the basis of their strengths. The workers are responsible for gathering food. The soldiers are little larger ants who are responsible for protecting the nest. The queen is responsible for laying eggs and plays a major role in the survival of the species. The drones help to start new colonies. They have a communication mechanism in place which helps them to share information and make decisions. Ants communicate by smelling chemicals on other ants. When few ants return with food, other ants meet them a number of times to get the trail smell so that they can join the mission. Since they have a common goal, they demonstrate collective behavior. No one ant commands the group to behave in a certain way. They all make individual decisions towards the common goal and so what we see is a collective behavior and action. They are very quick at taking action and adapting to new information. If an obstacle comes in their way, it will take seconds for them to change their path. If they find a better food source, they will instantly switch, which is not common in other creatures. What can we learn from Ant's way of collaborating? Answer the upcoming questions. 
and that's it that's it that's it that's it so basically they are trying to compare our work with the ants but really when you get into the details of the colony colonization of ants you'll be surprised they even have a small drainage system for their small colonies that's bizarre anyways thank you so much teachers it was great interacting with one and all today i hope everyone got uh, an insight on the school quality assurance and assessment framework uh, i hope this was providing a decent level of exposure and awareness to the teachers as well and their roles and responsibilities please go out to meet your leaders principals and say that ma'am can i contribute to be the part of um, you know squaf leading team and in return please give me a certificate that i did this job that could be accounted for your mandatory cpdrs as well why not so uh, let's take some initiatives and responsibilities and try to finish this by 31st march in case if anyone has a query please fill up the reflection form there is a query place okay okay by mistake i understand that uh, and at the same time if you have any other uh, concerns to talk to me my number is there on the reflection form you can reach out anytime and to know more about the super sunday workshops please uh, follow the linkedin pages of super teacher or follow me and more importantly super teacher dot in website me there is this thing called as upcoming events when you click on that you'll get to see the workshop details we try to provide the information directly from the ministry of education documents we try to be as authentic as possible however there could be chances that during our session i i interpret things in a different manner you are all in institutions and understand things better hence requesting everyone to please cross verify everything that's spoken and in order to retain information and understand things better talk about what you have learned it's like i learned this let me teach this to someone else the perspective completely changes put it on linkedin put it on whatsapp status you do whatever you want but put it somewhere talk to people most uh, the best could be call your spouse irritate them on a sunday let me tell you what exactly happened in today's webinar talk to them for 10 15 minutes that's more than sufficient so let me close for today's sunday workshop i'll meet you again in the next super sunday topic we are still discussing on what exactly is supposed to be there it will be uploaded by monday or tuesday maximum thank you so much teachers great interacting with one and all jai hind ah uh, icsc no it's not much different you can actually follow the same pattern yeah reflection form is coming on the chat thank you hema ma'am our team members reflection form please okay i let me put it i launched it you can see the reflection form babita ma'am nisha ma'am if anybody needs any of the information that i spoke right now please message me i shall give the powerpoint presentation or whatever you would like to have okay any other queries you can put it on the chat Okay. Oh, fantastic. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Saleha, ma'am. That's fantastic, Sajjati, ma'am. Thank you so much. Oh, that's fantastic, Ruth, ma'am. This would have been quite in useful. some people were actually talking about the salaries and things like that i would like to tell you that in india the salary is quite uniform when you look into the pay commission for teachers for every category it's quite uniform but especially it's applicable for government schools and not really for private schools to quite a large extent because if salary changes then somewhere the fee structure has to change and if fee structure is provided uniform then probably all the schools cannot give the same sort of facilities to the children so having a common salary structure for all the schools is going to be a very very massive task for somebody to work on i i do second that thought i agree to you but somewhere it's not that easily possible yeah rajmohan sir you just uh, write without the plus or minus symbol uh, write the complete uh, phone number it's my mistake i i could not i did not mention the country code i'm sorry Malam, no. Today it's not nineteenth Super Sunday webinar. Today it's I think forty seventh Super Sunday webinar, Malam. Yeah, today forty seventh. When we touch fifty, I think forty seventh. I'm not sure or forty sixth, but yeah, that's there. <laughs> Thank you, Sunita, ma'am. Thank you so much.
थैंक यू भारती मैम थैंक यू ईशा मैम थैंक यू ईशा मैम श्री मैम प्लीज मैसेज भी मैम आई वुड लाइक टू शेयर दीपीटी टू यू नो प्रॉब्लम Super fifty, <laughs> yes, something like that, Malvika. Ma'am, you're right. Super fifty. Manisha, ma'am, number is there on the reflection form, ma'am, on the top. Oh, you attended nineteen today. Okay. <laughs> Dheera Sharma, sir, if you don't mind requesting you to please message me on WhatsApp. Sure, Archana, ma'am, I shall do that. Thank you, Hasib, sir. Shilpa, I'm more than twenty-five. That's great. Next Sunday, we will announce on uh, the criteria for, uh, you know, whatever uh, achievements or milestones that you have achieved. So, if more than twenty, a certain recognition. If more than twenty-five or thirty, something like that. We are working on it. Oh, Lalita, I'm thirty-four Super Sunday workshop. No, that's interesting. Sorry, the twentieth workshop. Okay. <laughs> Tamana, ma'am, yeah, you have been regularly attending. You know, last time also we did squad, right? Yes, Dr. Sarabjit, ma'am, you are right. Focus on areas for improvement in every school in seven domains, and that's enough to achieve via squad. Sure, Dilip Kumar sir, I shall share it with you. Please, uh, message me on WhatsApp. Yes, Mala, ma'am, I know that. Nineteen webinars. I've done all till today. Arupita, ma'am, is that so? Okay, let me check that. Nisha, ma'am, is forty seventh for sure. I know that. Let's see. Even Vaishali, ma'am, right from the first Sunday, if I'm not wrong, she would have completed around forty five, forty seven Sundays. Hasib, so you can't open in Saudi Arabia the link, the reflection form. Please share the PDF as we are not able to. Open. Oh yeah, the Google, uh, the PowerPoint presentation, right? Well, these are all Google links. I'll be sharing the PPTs with you. Whoever is messaging me, you can download that as a PDF. Yes. Yeah, yeah, sure, Moshmi ma'am. Please message me on my WhatsApp number. Sure, Asif sir. Thank you so much. Message me on WhatsApp. You will get to see my number nine seven nine zero nine four one five six eight. You're right, Sukdira, ma'am. I I very strongly agree to your point. <laughs> We are at peace and not pieces. That's interesting. Message me on WhatsApp, teachers. That's it. That's it. So all the people from YouTube and Zoom, thank you so much. Great interacting. I would like to close the session for today. It's already late. Next set of uh, students are actually waiting for another session. Uh, I can't write that, sir. Please don't mistake me. Um, message me on WhatsApp. I'll be able to uh, respond to you. Thank you, Deepali, ma'am. Thank you so much. Let's close for the day. I'll come and meet you in next Super Sunday workshop with another amazing exposure topic. Bye, everyone. Thank you so much.